Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at multi-dimensional arrays in C++. We're going to take a look at two-dimensional arrays specifically. Uh, so sometimes um, you haven't got a list of values, you've got a table of values. And uh, to deal with that, you need a two-dimensional array. Let's take an example. We'll, we'll create a two-dimensional array of strings. So I'm going to type uh, the type here. Let's give this a name. Um, I'll call it animals. And um, I'm going to put uh, square brackets here on the end. And I'm going to have, in fact, two sets of square brackets. And I'm going to create a table of animals. So we're going to have, let, let's make it, I don't know, three by two or something like that. Uh, so I'll have two rows here. So the first, um, for the first um, size here, I'm going to put two, and then I'm going to have each each of those two rows is going to have three columns in it. So I'm going to put three here for the second index, and let's initialize that and see how it looks. So again, as with um, one-dimensional arrays, which we saw in the last tutorial. You don't have to initialize the values when you declare the array. Here, here we're declaring it. We don't have to initialize it here. We could just put a semicolon and um, set the values later. But here, let's actually initialize it to see what that looks like. So I'm going to say equals, and we're going to have um, curly parentheses, as we did for a one-dimensional array. But now the, the deal with this is that each of the elements in the array is itself an array. Uh, so with a two-dimensional array, we're going to have it's going to look like a table. So we're going to have two more curly brackets in here, and then a comma, and then following that, another pair of curly brackets, and no comma after the second one um, because that's the last one. So here we've got two rows um, as we specified here, and we're going to have three columns in each of those two rows. So let's say here fox, dog, cat. And in the second row, let's have mouse, squirrel, parrot. So this, this, is, um, this is a table. And uh, we can display the contents of this table using a nested for loop. This is one of those things that when you're beginning C++ and you've got to a certain point, uh, this is kind of like a thing that seems quite challenging, uh, but it, it's really useful. And two-dimensional arrays, for example, are extremely important if you do any work with graphics, but they're important in a lot of different contexts as well. Wherever you need a table, you're probably going to use a two-dimensional array or else um, a vector, which is something that we'll look at later in the course or possibly even in the next course, which is going to be on advanced C++. So let's create a for loop that can iterate over the inner loop here, uh, over, over, the, um, over the outer array, I should say. So this, this, here, this thing here is the outer array. It's an array with two elements, and this is the first element, and that's the second element. So let's iterate over that, just as we did in the last tutorial. Let's say for int i equals naught. Keep going. Um, while i is less than two, because we've got two rows in the in the outer array, so that's going to be um, we're going to look at the indices zero and one. This is an in index zero, and this is an index one, and i plus plus to increase i by one. And now we're going to have a loop within this loop, and we're going to pay scrupulous attention to indenting stuff with extra tabs whenever we put stuff within curly parentheses. So let's say in here four, and we can't use i again because we've already used it, so let's use j. Int j equals naught, and this is a common thing to do, use i, j, or k for, um, for, in, for loop counters like this. While um, j is less than three, because now we're going to iterate over the inner arrays, j is less than three and j++. And now we can output um, in here the elements of the array. So we're, we're going to be taking it row by row. So for the first row here, 
let's output cout and animals and now we need two indices to specify the position of the element within the array first one is i this specifies the position within the outer array so um, so this gets us um, this array or when the index is one it will get us this array and then we need a second index to get the element in a particular column within the within these um, inner arrays so here we're going to put j and now i'm going to output flush there and let's have a, a space after that as well to separate the individual elements like that and i'm going to put the new line after this inner for loop but within the outer for loop let's just have a new line c out endler because that will mean that every time we iterate through one of these arrays then we're going to put a new line after it so that we we get this sort of it, it kind of looks like a table let's save that and let's run it so what we get is this that's um that's our table so this looks a little bit complicated and again pr some practice is needed before you can really um, fully understand it and be comfortable with it one thing we can do here is we can miss out this the first index we can't miss out the second index because um, C++ kind of sees this as just a bunch of values one after the other like six values in this case and we need to clue in C++ as to how the array is organized so we're saying here that the, um, the inner arrays have three elements each we also can't have inner arrays with different numbers of elements in they've got to have the same numbers of elements in C++ and a really common mistake that beginners often make is they confuse these indices so if you end up having like I there or you put I there f f by accident or something like that then, um, then this isn't going to work. So you need to have um, I's there, J's there, and then you need to say I, J. And you need to be very, very careful that this is the number of elements in the outer array. So that's one and two. And this, the J value, um, goes up to the number of elements in the inner arrays, one, two, three, in both cases. And um, yeah, so, so this j is going to go 0, 1, and 2. It's not ever going to be equal to 3 because that will be off the end of the array. And i is going to be 0 and 1. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, th this is called a two dimensional array because we've got two dimensions. Um, each, of the, each, of the, um, each of the subscripts um, we think of as a dimension. And, um, and we can go kind of across the array, that's one dimension, or we can go down it, that's the second dimension. Or, or you could say they're, they're the other way around, you know, down is the first and across is the second or whatever. Um, but that's, that's why it's called a two-dimensional array. And you can have three-dimensional arrays and so on, you can add more brackets here. Uh, but then you're going to end up building some, you know, hyper-dimensional structure that could take up a lot of memory. And it's... Two-dimensional di two arrays are by, by far the most common form of multi-dimensional array, with three being less common. I've never seen anyone use four or five, but you could if, if you want to. So to practice this, um, what I'd suggest is that you create a two-dimensional array of integers and uh, try to print out a multiplication table for the numbers 1 to 10. And for each number, um, put the value in there that's um, equal to its multiplication table up to 10. So, so your first row in the array is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on up to 10. The second row is going to be 2, 4, 6 and uh, so on up to the final row which is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40. Try to print out a full multiplication table um, 10 by 10 and see what you get. Uh, so you're going to have to use use a, a nested for loop like this to initialize it, and um, you probably yeah if you start at one instead of zero instead of having zero times zero in the upper 
left corner here, you're going to have one by one. So you're going to have to carefully um, think about your loop indices or better still, maybe just add one where necessary within the actual brackets here where you need it. And then use a second nested for loop to display the full multiplication table. Uh, so see if you can see if you can do that. You're going to end up with a table that's like one, two, three, dot 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 up to ten, and then it's going to be two, four, six, dot dot dot, and then three, six, nine, all the way up to um, ten times three, which is thirty, and uh, and so on. So ha have a go at that. It's a little bit of a challenge for you. And until next time, happy coding.